it's pretty massive and pretty impressive and I mean, this is one mean looking tank. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns Hobbies and I'm going to be looking at this quite unique little kit here. It's not really little, it's actually pretty big for what it is. This is the Bandai Type 61 uh, Semivente from the Gundam Universe. So this particular tank was the main battle tank, I think, used in the early series. So during the early wars when um, uh, the mobile suits were coming and they were having the, uh, the Federation Wars. So these were quite often used for their ground attacks and used for support uh, fire for their mobile suits. But eventually they were, um, uh, I guess, rendered uh, obsolete because they just didn't have the uh, same sort of firepower or agility of a mobile suit. And the mobile suits were much bigger as well. And the guns themselves didn't have enough elevation to make any uh, difference. So it's quite a nice design. Uh, it's got a very uh, Israeli macabre look to it. It's got the twin barrels uh, of very high caliber 155 mil guns uh, in an auto loader which is inside the hull uh, and then it's got a 12.5 millimeter uh, machine gun for uh, additional support. So let's get into it and have a closer look. Oh by the way it's 135 scale so if you want to build this and have it next to your other uh, sort of tanks it'll fit in quite nicely. So you might notice that for a 35 scale tank it is already pretty big and it is pretty big because, let's look at the obvious bits. It's got this gigantic turret. Well, that's absolutely massive. And then you've got this gigantic hull. Okay, so if you were to compare this to, say, a Macabre, a Macabre would be like this big. Okay, so you've already got massive size to boot. Okay, so you've got your main bits there. Massive turret, you can see the cutouts for the two big guns. All right, so here we have one of the guns there. Okay, so you've got your barrels, they come in halves. So you don't see many of these sort of uh, military kits from Bandai, but again, it's all, as you can see from the big lugs, it's all snap fit together. I mean, something like this has got a lot of small parts, so I would be inclined to glue a lot of it together. Okay, so that gives you an impression of how big the gun is. So I'm sure there'll be another one in here. Okay, over here we've got uh, some sections, so this would be the back of the, um, the hull. You've got some hatches. Uh, over here you have some suspension, which is the, uh, the swing arm. So it still looks like a very traditional type tank in the suspension. It's got the poly caps here, so they're the rubbery bits, so that'll help uh, all the road wheels slide onto these uh, suspension. You've got some uh, flare discharges here, or uh, smoke grenades. Uh, and other bits of armor. Uh, for the hull. Okay, so that's that bit there. Okay, here, so this is more recognizable as Bandai style. So Bandai are famous for all the multicolored sprues. So you see how you've got your, your general color for the uniform for the figurines. And then you have flesh color here for uh, the heads and the arms. And then you've got the braids which have been uh, molded in a separate red. So as you can see here, you can see the lugs, they all sort of press together. But obviously with these, even though they are multicolored, you know, the helmet itself is still flesh colored, so that would be nice to paint up. Okay, that's the figures. Okay, over here we've got some of the road wheels. As you can see, road wheels are massive too, and the suspension. So compared to a regular 35 scale, that's really chunky, particularly the sprockets too. Okay, but that's quite common with other tanks. You've got a bit of um, uh, textured string there to act as a uh, tow cable. It's a nice touch. Okay, here's a fairly obvious part too. This is the bottom of the hull. So that gives you an idea of size as well. I mean, that's huge. And then inside this, uh, the green packet, you may not see, but there's some uh, stainless steel pins in there. So they'll be used on the suspension at some point. Okay, I might leave that over there. All right, this section has got some clear parts. A bit hard to see, I guess. So here you've got the, um, the periscope uh, glass, which would go into the cupola, so that would be just here. You can see the little cutouts already, so they just pop inside. And then there's probably headlights there as well, and other um, uh, gun sighting lenses. Alright, over here we've got some grey bits. Uh, from what I can tell, they're small arms. So you've got a, um, a squad weapon there, so it's like a, a medium uh, heavy machine gun. You've got some pistols. 
So these are things that you can have uh, added onto the, the solder figures that I showed before. And then over here, got these special water slide decals. So division markings and numbers. It's very nice. Okay, here we have side armor. So you get your side panel armor here. So it looks like a sort of modern tanks with their reactive armor. That'll cover up uh, uh, the wheels up to this point and protect the uh, the tops of the track. So the tracks will be running down the bottom there. Then on this side, this is the side of the hull. So you've got your sprockets here. So one of these would be the, um, uh, the sprocket for driving and the other one will be the idler. And then you've got the sections here that'll support all the swing arm suspension. And that's where the idlers go. So you've got the track that goes around there. Very chunky. Right, okay, there's the other section. So that's the other gun. So that's identical to the first bit that I brought out before. So the twin 155mm caliber. Over here you've got another one of those sprockets. So I had that earlier. So road wheels, sprockets. It's probably got sprockets on both sides. Okay, so that goes there. Over here, look at the size of these massive tracks. So really chunky tracks, super wide. So much wider than any main battle tank uh, of uh, real. Um, but it's nice that they're flexible and these will be the ones that uh, just sort of um, glue together. And then on the bottom you've got, um, that's just the back of it, some more of the uh, parts. So these are probably like um, uh, big mud flap parts for the, uh, for the hull I'd say. Now you got the ladder of course, gigantic, you'll need a ladder for this one. And then other armor parts. Okay, so that is the end of all the sprue. With that, there's this really nice sheet of photo wedge. So photo wedge for the grills, for the engines, and other parts of the, uh, of the hull, probably for the exhaust as well. Nice touch. Super fine. And then we have the manual. Okay, really nicely made manual. So, nice artwork here. Gives a little bit of the history in Japanese. This folds out like so. So it gives you a nice um, uh, reference for painting. So you've got the figures all painted up and the options for the figures too. So you can have one with a helmet or you can have them with the, uh, the beret. There's the option of showing the difference between painted and non-painted. So that's original non-painted and painted. So of course, if you've got the skills or you've got the time to paint it, it'll definitely look much better. You can weather it up, make it look really rough. So nice. Okay, so this section here shows you all the sprue and how many uh, that it comes with. So obviously the, uh, the gun sprue comes with two. That's the gun sprue there. And then they're all marked so you can easily identify them. Okay, so let's start the assembly. So assembly is uh, the bottom of the hull. You got the hull sides going in to the main base. Sprocket uh, holders, the back of the um, the engine compartment. And then all the swing arms going on. Then have I missed something? Oh, I have missed something. Missed a few pages here. Hang on. Let's just go back a bit. Bit of a rewind. Okay, so here's the rest of the sprockets going in. We've got the road wheels and the sprockets, and then you've got the idlers, and it goes into the track. So the track's actually two pieces. Oh, there you go. That's where the pins are. So they're pinned together with those stainless steel pins we saw in the green bag. Over here, that's all the tracks going on, and then the top of the hole is being constructed now. So you've got the driver's compartment here. And then that goes onto the hull. And then you've got all the other details. So going onto the side of the hull, your lights. Your opposite lights there. I got tool. Uh, uh, racks. Uh, and then over here, looks like parts of the exhaust. Over here, we've got the, uh, the side armor. That's getting uh, all the hooks and the handles put onto it. Opposite side. They're all mounted up on the side there over the, the tracks. 
And then this is the tow cable that we saw before the, the string. A few of the tools that it recommends for the photo wedge, so how to cut the photo wedge out. And then the building of the turret with the two guns. Uh, all these sections here, which I thought were letters, they're not actually letters, that's um, stowage. So you can put uh, rucksacks and things in there. So that's where uh, some of the mesh is going. And then also to the back. So it's very reminiscent of, say, uh, an Abrams tank. Okay, so you've got the rest here. That uh, is the back of the turret again. You've got your aiming system for the gunner. Uh, the final parts of the, uh, the cupola going in. So the commander would be in there, the hatch. And then the turret is affixed to the hull. So you notice that it's fixed on bayonet style like a lot of other tank models. So that when you put it on, it locks into place. You get your small arms uh, and um, defensive weapons getting built here. So there's a, the defensive weapon which it looks a bit like a saw machine gun. And then you've got your final assembly and there's a, um, an idea of how it all works. So that's just showing you how the autoloader is loaded up. So it's like on a rotating magazine. Okay, so there's a 12 and a half mil gun. And then there's a smaller saw at the back, which is probably a 7.62. So over here, they're showing um, the gun supports. So you can either have them up, lock the gun in place or stowed. And then you've got the figurines and their final painting. And that's how the driver figure is in the center there. And there, that's the end of it. Okay, so you've got uh, options for painting, so this is more of a green scheme. All in all, I think it's a really, really nice looking tank. So, you can get the impression here that the hull looks tiny, but that gives you a better idea of how big that turret is. I mean, this is one mean looking tank. So, unfortunately it didn't work very well with the, uh, the big mobile suits, because they were just huge. But, for a, uh, a tank, like a modern tank of its time, uh, it's pretty massive and pretty impressive and I think it looks really good, particularly with the twin guns, which makes it even more um, awesome. So that's it. This is my open box review of the Bandai Type 61 Silvente from the Gundam Universe.